Hello, my name is Brandon and welcome to the next video in my series on basic statistics. If you are new to the channel, welcome and please subscribe. If you are a returning viewer, it is great to have you back. And of course, if you do like it, hit the thumbs up and share it with classmates, colleagues or friends or whoever else you think might benefit from watching. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So this video is the next in my series on simple linear regression. And what we're going to look at in this video is what happens when we perform linear regression on observations or data that we have standardized. And you should remember what that is back from when we were talking about Z scores and things of that nature. So when we regress standardized values, some interesting things become apparent that are kind of happening under the hood. And I think they're pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus. Chances are you're watching this video because you need to or want to learn something. And there are few better places to learn things than The Great Courses Plus where you can get access to over 10,000, yes, that's 10,000 video lectures in their library. So check out the link in the description below, help support the channel, and of course support The Great Courses Plus. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, so this is the data we've been using in previous regression videos. I'm not going to go into great depth, but you can see that we have a scatter plot. On the x axis, we have the bill amount, say in a restaurant, of what the uh, meal cost. And then on the y axis here on the left, we have the tip that the server, waiter, waitress received for performing the service for the customer. So, for example, on the right, you can see that we have a bill that is $108 and the waiter or waitress received a tip of $17, so on and so forth. And we are building a regression model based on this data. And I do want to point out the mean for each variable because it will be important later. So you can see that the mean bill amount was $74, that's X bar, and the mean tip amount, Y bar, was $10. So this is the model we get when we perform our analysis. So a few things I want to point out here. First, you can see our regression equation, which is y or y hat equals 0.1462x minus 0.8188. So that means that our slope or b sub 1 is 0.1462. And then, of course, our intercept is 0.8188. Or when you do some rounding, it might be a little bit different depending on what software you use, but it's basically the same thing. So that's our regression equation. We have a centroid here of 74 and 10. And again, that point just represents the mean of each variable. So our mean tip amount was $10 here on the y-axis and our mean bill amount was $74 here on the x-axis. So this is the model we are working with. Now what that means is that for every $1 increase in the meal bill, we would expect or predict an increase in the tip amount of about 15 cents. So you can see our slope there of 0.1462 that means for every dollar the bill goes up, we expect an increase of technically 14.62 cents in the tip, but we kind of round up to 15 cents. So that's how we interpret that. So now let's get to the heart of what this video is about. First thing we're gonna do is standardize the bill amount values. So remember, when we standardize a value, all we're doing is taking that value, we subtract the mean, and then divide that difference by the standard deviation. So here for meal one, we have a bill amount of $34. We're gonna subtract the mean bill amount, which is $74, and then divide by the standard deviation, which is 26.48, and then we're going to get a Z-score of negative 1.51. Remember, what that means is that the bill value of $34 is 1.51 standard deviations below the mean. Okay, so we're talking about standard deviations when we're talking about Z scores or standardized scores. So we can go ahead and put that on a distribution here. So you can see that this value for meal one is 1.5, 1 1.51 standard deviations below the mean. So you can see that the red one down there is halfway between negative one and negative two. We can do the same for meal number two. So we can see that meal number two is 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. So we have the red two down there. And then we do the same for the rest. 
So meal three, you can see the three down there is negative 0.38 deviations below the mean. Meal four is about a half a deviation above the mean. You can see that down there at the bottom. Meal five is 0.94, so it's almost one deviation above the mean. And then meal number six is negative 0.87, so a little bit below one deviations below the mean. So you can see where each meal falls down there on the bottom of the distribution. So now the same thing for the tips. In the previous slide, we did the bills. Now we're going to do the tips. Same thing. Here's our distribution. We can see that, I'm not going to do the math again, but we can see that meal one is negative 1.12 deviations below the mean. Meal two, the tip is 1.57 deviations above the mean, and so on and so forth. So you can see where each tip falls along that distribution as well. So now let's combine the two. So now we kind of have a different data set, but instead of dealing with dollars in our observations, we're dealing with standardized values. So what we can do is actually plot those. So here on the left side, we have the standardized or Z, what I call tips. So that's the same thing we did in the previous slide. And then up above here, we have the z-scores for the meals. And we treat both of those just like a coordinate, okay? So if we go to this first meal over here, we have a coordinate of negative 1.51 and negative 1.12. So we're gonna plot those on our graph down here. And that falls about right here. So where each meal one corresponds, we go ahead and put a data point. Do the same thing for meal number two. So you can see that we have 1.28 for the bill and 1.57 for the tip. So that's that point there. Now we can go ahead and just do the same thing for each meal and put that on our scatter plot. So there we go. Every meal in terms of standardized scores has been plotted on this graph. So cozy correlations. So here is our original data correlation when we were dealing with meal dollars and tip dollars. Well, the correlation between those two things was 0.866. Now look what happens when we find the correlation for our standardized values. It's the same. So what we can say is that the raw data correlation and the standardized value correlation are the same. This is further evidence that correlation itself is a standardized comparison. So regardless of whether we're using original data, in this case in dollars, or standardized values that we turn into z-scores, the correlation is the same. So here is our graph we just did, kind of blown up the full screen in terms of standardized scores. So a couple interesting things here. Remember that because they're standardized, the centroid or the mean of each is zero, okay, because we standardized them. Now when we do the regression, we get a regression equation that does not have any intercept, or the intercept is actually zero, so it's more accurate. So the regression equation is y equals 0.866x. Well, where did you see that before? Well, that's the correlation. So we see these values pop up in weird ways, in different ways, when we standardize these values. So what we're saying here, in terms of interpreting what we have here, is in standard deviations. So what we're saying is that one standard deviation increase in X, okay, in this case, the bill amount, is related to 0.866 standard deviation increase in Y. Or another way to think of it is R, remember R stands for correlation, standard deviations. And that's where we're getting into really interesting things. So we interpret this as one deviation increase in X, corresponds to 0.866 deviation increase in Y, which is the same thing as the correlation coefficient, which is the same thing as the slope of the regression line, which you can see over here on the left. Pretty cool. So if we had an equation, it would be this. So the Z-score for tip is equal to 0.866 times the Z-score for the meal. And that's how we would represent this regression equation based on standardized scores. So when plotting the standardized values, the slope of the regression line is the correlation coefficient. So back to the future, B1, the slope. So here is our graph and a regression equation we did at the beginning. So 
this is the way this all relates, okay? The original regression slope, in this case, 0 0.146, is equal to the correlation times the ratio of standard deviations, okay? So y deviation over the standard deviation of x. And actually, we'll go ahead and prove that. So here's the equation. So the slope is equal to the correlation multiplied by deviation of y divided by the standard deviation of x. Put in the numbers. So remember that the correlation is 0.866. The, de the standard deviation for y, the tip amount is 4.47 divided by the deviation of the bill amount, which is 26.48. And again, those are actually in dollars. Go ahead and do that math. And what do we get? We get the actual slope of the regression equation, which is 0 0.146. Now, of course, because of the miracles of algebra, we can also do something else. So now we can talk about R, which is the correlation coefficient. So with the algebra, we know that the correlation is equal to the original regression slope multiplied by the deviation of X divided by the deviation of Y. And again, that's just an algebraic transformation. So here is our graph. Here is the equation. So R equals B sub one, which is the regression coefficient times deviation of X over deviation of Y. Go ahead and plug in those numbers. And lo and behold, we get 0 0.866. So you can see that everything here is related, especially when we're talking about standardized scores. The correlation, the regression slope, okay, based on the non-standardized values, and then a deviation of both variables are all related. And that happens when we look at how we regress standardized values. So final notes. So using standardized values can be controversial. Not everyone likes using them, but there are some benefits. They're useful for interpreting variables having very different scales and variances, um, or units for that matter. So in this example, we're using dollars and you know both the tip and bill amount are in dollars, and they're scaled pretty much the same because they're in a value of a dollar bill. So there's no real problems with this. But if you have an X variable or you know, a dependent variable and an independent variable that are completely different units that have very wide scales and variances and things like that, by standardizing them into standardized values, you eliminate all those issues and then you can proceed. So standardized values can be very helpful in that regard. So determining which variables, and this is about multiple regression, so determining which variables in multiple regression account for the most variance in the dependent variable. So when we're talking about you know, multiple regression and figuring out which variable contributes to the overall model and how much variance it explains, using standardized values in the interpretation can greatly help with that because again, it takes out the elements of units and scales and things like that. So making decisions on which variables offer the most, quote, bang for the buck relative to each other. So if you're going through a variable selection procedure in multiple regression or other type techniques, this can actually tell you which variables contribute to the overall model and which you may want to eliminate. So they're also helpful when it comes to seeing the general linear relationships between variables, again, regardless of units. Because once you standardize them, every variable has the same unit, it's a standardized score. This video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, where you can get unlimited access to over 10,000 different video lectures taught by award-winning professors from the Ivy League and other top schools around the world. You can learn about anything that interests you, science, literature, and yes, statistics, like this lecture from Professor Michael Starbird called Real Estate, Accounting for Value, from his course, Meaning from Data, Statistics Made Clear. And right now, The Great Courses Plus is offering my viewers a free trial and is also now optimized for Australia and the UK. So go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash Brandon Foltz, my name, to have access to the 10,000 video lecture library or click on the link in the description below. Okay, so that wraps up this video on simple linear regression, looking at what happens when we perform regression on standardized values. And what it does is it helps reveal the underlying relationships between correlation, between the slope, between the deviation of each variable. So again, if you have three, you can find the fourth and vice versa, and you can kind of see where the numbers come from. 
So I hope this video was helpful in gaining a deeper insight into what's actually happening under the hood in regression, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.